Hello and welcome back everyone to yet another Let's Play. I am beyond thrilled to play a round of Divinity Original Sins 2, the Definitive Edition. For those of you who don't know the Definitive Edition, it's an update to the regular edition, basically rebalancing a couple of skills, nothing major. However, we're not only going to play on the highest difficulty, um, Honor Mode, uh, we're going to make it just a little bit more difficult than that. Uh, there will be improved enemies and uh, the only issue that I had um, by preparing this video is there is a very limited amount of mods for the Definitive Edition. Unfortunately with uh, the Definitive Edition coming out the old mods are no longer comp uh, compatible. So when we're looking at the mods that we're going to use in this run I am heavily going to rely on the Enemy Upgrade Overhaul uh, mod which is essentially doing three things and this is uh, how we're going to improve the difficulty drastically. Number one, enemies are going to be uh, receiving random buffs uh, that could be an aura buff or that could be simply stat buffs making them substantially stronger. Number two, en uh, enemies and all of them actually will receive random additional skills, uh, making it less predictable what they can or cannot do. So you're going to see some additional uh, skills that they are using. Um, nothing of that should impede any of the tactics that I'm going to apply here. Um, all of the tactics that I'm going to show you can be totally used uh, within a normal run as well. And finally, and that's probably the most important uh, part of it. Um, the enemy overhaul will level all of uh, the enemies to your level, making them making each combat as difficult um, as uh, as a full fledged hard engagement. I'm going to be uh, to go beyond that. I'm not only going to fight against uh, equal level monsters. I will make them two levels higher than my party at all times. So that's not going to be an easy fight. Every single fight is going to be hardcore. For those of you who aren't aware of the level mechanic in Divinity Original Sins, a single level actually makes a huge difference. So if you ever struggle um, on the normal playthrough or on normal honor mode uh, with not being able to uh, fight a single uh, pack, just consider gaining a level uh, somewhere in between and come back at a later time. The fight will be incredibly, incredibly easy once you are at the same level compared to uh, fighting against enemies a level higher. And two levels higher, just in comparison, means uh, the enemies often have thrice, uh, so three times the amount of uh, hit points, substantially higher amounts of armor, um, and they dish out a lot of damage, almost one-shotting you in many of the cases. So, long story short, it's going to be a tough run. Um, what I wanted to do, because uh, many people have asked me to do that, what I wanted to do in this run is um, approach the game with a balanced party, so kind of give you an indication of how to approach honor mode with a really balanced uh, party. All of the builds that you're going to see will be optimized, so uh, you can apply them in, in your own run. And I'll also give some guidance as of how to even further optimize the party, making it more physically or more magically heavy. So without further ado, let's go into the honor mode and begin our journey. And I'll talk a little bit about character creation and what our party is going to look like. So, when you play through the first act, uh, you will be bound to three of uh, the original characters. And in terms of races, um, all of them are fine, but if you really want to optimize two races, um, stand above the others. One being humans, uh, due to their ability to encourage, um, specifically having two humans uh, within the same group to constantly chain encourage, not only um, AoE heals, but also more importantly gives you stats and improves your crit chance. And crit is actually quite important, specifically in the later parts of the game, as it is a, a huge contributor to damage. So that being said, um, 
the perfect party therefore if you look at the uh, starting characters you do uh, have oh I should talk about the elves. The elves are incredibly good due to their flesh sacrifice ability, essentially from time to time giving them an extra uh, turn. I would always recommend to put the damage dealer, so the DPS, um, as elves, because uh, the extra ability points uh, will help you to dish out even more damage. Uh, so if you look at the normal characters, you have one elf, which is Sibyl, and you have two humans, which is Ifan and essentially Losa. Um, so all of those three should be in your party, uh, which means I am recommending you to create a custom character. Since the party, the balanced party that I'm going to show you, will consist out of one melee character, which is predominantly going to be um, an, uh, uh, a CC character, two damage dealers, one a ranged physical damage dealer and one a ranged magical damage dealer, and one kind of support slash uh, filling the gaps summoner sort of character. Um, the uh, uh, the elves should um, take the position of the damage dealer, so we do have a physical and uh, and a magical damage dealer. It's really up to you how you how you want to play it. I personally, um, in this setup, uh, will start with a custom uh, elf that is going to be a mage. So we're taking the preset of wizard. Um, of course, the character is going to be called Saiken. Appearance uh, doesn't matter for this run. We can go with a standard. So if you want to create the mage, and I'm going to go through the builds as we go through the run. Um, and if you're interested, I can even make a single video for each of the builds uh, to kind of uh, lay out how I would skill them in Act 1 and Act 2. And afterwards, it really doesn't matter because you are anyway so strong uh, that you will crush the game even on honor mode. So we're starting with high intelligence. Um, intelligence will be the main stat to boost damage for mages. We're going to start with uh, Pyro and Geomancy, um, as both of them are really nice uh, damaging skills. We're not going to go into Lore Master. Uh, we're instead going to go into Thievery. Many of our characters will go into Thievery. And in terms of um, in terms of damage skills, we're going to go with single target damage plus the Fossil Strike um, as our go-to. Uh, starting uh, set. So that's really the starting part. Um, I cannot stress enough how important elemental affinity is. We're going to use that quite a bit in this run. So this will be the talent of our choice. Um, doesn't really matter what you pick here. And we are off into our adventure. All right, and here we are within the game. Uh, I will keep the video of escaping from the ship relatively short, so I will just uh, show the highlights of how to do it. But let me shortly tell you about um, the two other mods that I'm using. Uh, one being fleet-footed. Uh, there is a mod that allows you to move faster outside of combat. It has absolutely no effect in, uh, in combat. Uh, it essentially just makes my life uh, way easier. The second one is going to be a magical mirror in uh, Act 1 that allows you to respec. I highly recommend uh, you get that uh, mod. Um, again, just quality of life. Nothing that I'm doing requires this, so you could just simply uh, play without it. Um, let's start with uh, what I would suggest to do at the very beginning. Uh, number one uh, before we even start the game is make sure that you loot everything and by everything I mean uh, there are a lot of tables uh, um, a lot of crates a lot of uh, little cupboards all of this is going to be valuable and it's adding up uh, so you can manipulate and put uh, things to the side to even further go uh, to even further go into the uh, rooms. And I suggest that we're going to loot all of this. Once I'm done with it, um, we're going to continue right here. Oh, and before we go on, I wanted to show you uh, the configuration of the enemy mod. That's actually quite important. So it's called Enemy Upgrade Overhaul. Um, by using this mod, you'll get this uh, little um, 
uh, this little tomb in your inventory and basically what it does is it enables uh, buff upgrades for individuals, aura upgrades, uh, some monsters get immunities, some will get bonuses, additional talents and stats. All of uh, that is a standard for every single um, for every single monster. And secondly, you can enable monster scaling that uh, essentially will um, level every single monster that you're fighting to your level. Uh, word of advice. Uh, it will make um, fights with many enemies incredibly difficult because every single enemy will be strong and I will um, even use a level modifier of two. So right off, right off the back, um, the enemies that I'm fighting are going to be level three, whilst we are still going to be level one, um, which means everything will probably have uh, three times as many hit points or more, uh, will hit for probably half of our hit points. So really, really tough enemies, but I'm still going to show you how to pull it off. All right, if you have successfully looted everything you will gain an abundance of extra loot uh, in this case i got myself for instance uh, three buckets uh, plus one that i'm wearing so a lot of armor we got ourselves an armor potion you can already see an additional fire uh, fire scroll and a firestorm grenade so lots of useful items for the beginning i highly recommend taking the ooze barrel as well because there's already a little uh, a trick that I can tell you any weapon that you will find uh, combined with an ooze barrel so any weapon except wands and staffs uh, can be poisoned poison deals additional damage so there you go uh, that is essentially a very important uh, recipe that you should know when playing this game so we're going to leave the tutorial deck uh, heading up upwards uh, in terms of collecting items i would uh, take all of the items which are light in weight but uh, high in value again here i cannot stress enough how important it is to go through all of the cupboards you can see an incredible amount of vials that were uh, that we're getting from here uh, so they will become very useful later because uh, act number one is by far the hardest act in divinity original since uh, specifically on honor mode and we will use quite a few potions in order to make sure that we're surviving difficult fights. So first thing you want to do is uh, talk with a magister, make sure during the uh, talk to also go into her inventory because uh, once we kill her later in the story, um, that will mean she essentially keeps the loot. Little trick there to gain some extra loot from the beginning. Um, again, moving forward, basically loot all of the items that you can find specifically the bed rolls here are going to be important bed rolls essentially are an out of combat item that allow you to fully rest and gain a rested bonus um, i will collect all of the stuff here specifically the three bed rolls if you haven't done so, uh, so far collect the buckets as well and go through every single item pretty simple all right once you looted everything just go through the door uh, this will prompt uh, the uh, the scene here. Nothing that you can do really. So within that fight, it's just a storyline fight. And essentially, this is where hell breaks loose on the ship. After you reawake, just continue looting. It's going to be a, a pretty consistent theme here the trick that i could offer is loot the bottles of wine and loot the empty cups uh, because we're going to do another crafting um, crafting recipe so bottles of wine are reasonably um, expensive so we can sell them later uh, but the we're only going to sell the wine. We're needing the bottles to make uh, Molotov cocktails out of it. This chest here is important as it offers you a few um, extra options. We're going with... Um, I think we're actually going to stay with a dagger, to be honest. The reason why I'm saying this is I want to have the sucker punch, which is... 
uh, if your offhand is empty, uh, you can use uh, Sucker Punch as a crowd controlling ability. We would have a toy crossbow here, but I'm not convinced about the damage. So the weapons that you will gain are a little bit random. If uh, you're not getting the one that you need, don't sweat it. You will eventually get the right weapon. So once you have all of the empty bottles and looted up everything here, you're good to go. And that's really where we need to be a bit more careful now. Um, and where probably this particular playthrough will uh, differ a little bit from what I will suggest that you are doing. So there are going to be enemies here. Um, and on normal honor mode, uh, you do not have a large problem with dealing with them, although the source hound here is a bit of an issue. It's a relatively strong com uh, combatant. However, since we have enemy strength plus two so same level plus two it essentially means uh, that we're uh, that we're going to be heavily outgunned and uh, that is specifically true in the next room so i'm going to prepare the toy crossbow uh, uh, pre-poisoning it uh, we're using it for now um, if you run into doors that you can't open uh, consider using a ranged weapon just to uh, destroy them <clears throat> way more effective than uh, using uh, than using a tool. There's a little bit of physical armor that we could uh, gain here. I was uh, fortunate enough to get some shoes and uh, a normal armor. But here is really where uh, this playthrough and yours is going to um, is going to defer a bit. I'm using a persuasion to basically tell them uh, I can snoop around. I would highly recommend you, if you're playing this on German, uh, just normal honor mode, to put a little bit of oil in between you and them. You can always use the skill out of combat, just like this here. It will redu reduce their attitude a bit, but like nothing major. And essentially attack both of them. The reason why I'm not doing this is uh, they will scale up to level 3 and by doing so they are also healing. So in reality for you it's only 12 hit points. For me it would be probably like 90 to 100 hit points uh, plus even more armor than they currently have. So that's a battle which I cannot win. Um, it's due to the enemy scaling mode that I'm using. On normal honor mode, it's perfectly winnable. And I, matter of fact, would even recommend you to kill both of them for some extra XP. Doesn't matter too much in this run here. Um, again, we're, we're going to be fine. We looted everything um, that, uh, that we could. Closing the doors so that there is no line of vision for the dog. And uh, let's continue to loot everything here. Once I'm done, we're going to continue. Okay, so we have come to the part where the first battle is inevitable. And unfortunately, you're going to face a battle where uh, you're up against two enemies that are hard to defeat. So whenever that is going to happen, let's use the absolute maximum uh, that we do have available. Uh, in order to prepare ourselves. Uh, number one, we're always going to uh, rest. And number two, we're drinking the armor potion so that once we're entering the combat, we effectively start with 34 additional armor. We will need this. You can see the enemies uh, are massively scaled up. So uh, they are actually quite difficult. So we are going to prepare beating both of them. The way we're trying to do this is essentially by crowd controlling them as much as possible. Luckily for us, we haven't taken damage yet, but that's very soon going to change. So we're using our uh, flash sacrifice ability and what I need to do now is to, to essentially deal as much damage as humanly possible uh, to those creatures of course it would have been better to 
to fight one of them at a time. What we're going to do is we're going to position ourselves in a way so that one of uh, only one of uh, them can reach us. You know what? I think this here is a better decision. I'm going to use the fire arrow. This will send this cockroach here on a long journey. And again, we're minimizing the damage that we're taking. By no means, uh, this is over by no means. Uh, continue to apply uh, the burning state as well as hit plus continue poisoning them. We're now going to take some damage in the next turn. Oh no, we're not. It's the first time that they are doing that. I wasn't even aware that that uh, works. So I'm not going to abuse any, like, well, I don't intend to abuse any uh, sort of positioning uh, problems that they do have. This here is unintentional. I wasn't even aware about this to work. Good. We killed the first one of them. Uh, mm, in case you're wondering why I haven't installed uh, an XP reduction mod, it doesn't really make any difference what your XP or level is. If you are fighting high level enemies, it's always going to be difficult. Um, so that was the rationale behind it. Plus, to be honest, for the definitive edition, I haven't seen that there was a valid mod available. So, this fight here should be over pretty soon. Oh, I can see there is a ladder up here. Let's use the high ground. There we go. First combat was over for you. You're probably not going to fight against 90 hit points uh, versions of the vicious voidlings, uh, but you can apply the same tactic essentially. Good. Next stop, loot everything, and essentially afterwards go underneath the deck. All right, here we go. So next step go underneath the deck and there are a couple of things that you can do first of all uh, magister 7 here is highly damaged uh, that's the point where we're going to take a little bit of revenge for her previous uh, for her previous deeds uh, this here is exactly what she had uh, and since you have traded with her earlier that's the additional loot that you're gaining so it's time to cash in As an elf, you can uh, eat body parts whenever you find them. I would recommend to doing so. Not only does it give you a little bit of healing and regeneration, you also sometimes learn new skills. Adrenaline is an excellent skill. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're not having any points in... Uh, uh, in ah, what's the skill called? Scandrel, that's what I was looking for. Adrenaline uh, is going to be a skill that we're going to use a little bit later. So here we go, uh, even further. And yet again, uh, you can see all of them are leveled up. Some of them even got some additional abilities. What we're trying to do here is we're going to simply uh, make our way back, to be honest, and let the NPCs handle the fight because all of them are leveled as well. Hmm. Let the games begin. Or maybe they are not. Sibyl is still level one. 
Well, normally they don't have any problem dealing with them, but there is a huge discrepancy in level, and that might be a problem. Yeah, we don't want to lose Lose here. Luckily, they seem to have some sort of potions right on them. I've faced worse. No, I think they're going to be fine. To be uh, perfectly honest, uh, the last time I did this here was without the plus two um, a level. I only enabled that once we got onto the island. But this here shouldn't be an issue. I don't care too much about the Red Prince. Losa, on the other hand... Good. Everything somewhat uh, running according to plan. Let's try to be useful. Luckily for us, the Voidlings have absolutely no armor and thus are totally receptible to any sort of crowd control. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure the characters will mop up now. And since every single one of them has a potion, I'm not even afraid that they could be defeated. If the siege is you anything, um, it shows you how much more difficult combats become once enemies are on a higher level. So if you are not using the mod, you will probably um, encounter a very, very different battle here. Uh, these Voidlings stand absolutely no chance against uh, the players normally. So it's quite interesting to see. All right, there we go. That was the first fight. Um, essentially, everyone is now running out and we're going to loot. Uh, once I'm done with that, uh, we will continue. Good, so we are finally closing chapter one and getting off uh, the boat, essentially starting to go to the first island. Good, there we go. We arrived at the first island, also got a level. You're probably not going to have a level by now because you haven't fought uh, that high level enemies, but it really doesn't uh, matter. Everything that I'm doing now uh, will be exactly the same in uh, your playthrough, but we're going to see that during the next video. I'll keep it to half an hour at, uh, at most. And in the next video, we're going to build up our party, kind of set up, and I'll talk a little bit about the quest that we're going to uh, do. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like down below and uh, consider leaving a comment. Thank you. Have a great day and bye bye.